And now to the final of the review of our 2021 reports. And I have joining me on the news at 10, the head of our foreign affairs desk, Amarachi Ubani. Hello, Amarachi. Hi, Bukola. Great to see you. So 2021 was a pretty interesting year, and I'm sure you witnessed that. A lot of activities happening from the capital rights in the U.S. to the Haitian president who was assassinated to the coups in Africa. I mean, there was just a lot more. Take a listen. In 2021, President Mamadou Buhari was on the move, visiting various countries from the U.K. for the Education Summit in July, the United States in September, where he addressed the 76th session of the UN General Assembly, and Istanbul for the Turkey-Africa Summit, amongst others. But apart from traveling out, a handful of world leaders also visited the president in Nigeria. In December, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa made a stopover with an aim of strengthening relations. The president also received the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. Unfortunately, the year 2021 was also a year which highlighted the treatment of Nigerians abroad, namely the mishandling of a Nigerian diplomat by immigration officials in Indonesia. And uh, this was a clear breach of uh, the Vienna Convention and um, an act of uh, egregious uh, international delinquency. Nigerians also mourned the death of a young woman, Itunu Babalola, who was said to have been wrongly jailed in Côte d'Ivoire. And amid a diplomatic row between the United Arab Emirates and Nigeria, resulting in continuous flight bans by both countries, Nigerians living in the UAE also faced difficulties due to work permit restrictions. Elsewhere, on the African continent in 2021, there were four successful military takeovers across the continent in Chad, Mali, Guinea and Sudan, up from just one in 2020. Another point of concern was the Ethiopian conflict, which worsened, resulting in the death of thousands and displacement of millions more. We also saw the unexpected death of Chadian president Idris Deby on the battlefield just hours after he was declared winner of the presidential election. Tanzanian president John Magufuli also died, leading to the appointment of the country's first female president. It is truly disheartening. Former South African president Jacob Zuma's tussle with the law also cut up with him leading to his imprisonment for 15 months in June for contempt of court. The move resulted in days of rioting, which left about 300 people dead. <laughs> Away from the continent, the United States, long the champion of democracy, saw its peaceful transition of power disrupted for the first time in its history by the January 6th insurrection which saw former U.S. President Donald Trump supporters storm the U.S. Capitol building. Nonetheless, Joe Biden was sworn in as the 46th U.S. President on January 20th. Kamala Harris sworn in as the first black and Asian female vice president of the United States. The U.S. war in Afghanistan ended as it started 20 years earlier with the Taliban in power. Kabul fell on August 15th, trapping thousands of foreigners in the capital city and leading to panic and a chaotic effort by Western forces to evacuate. On July 7th, Haiti's president, Jovenel Moïse, was assassinated in his private residence in the capital, Port-au-Prince, plunging the country into chaos. The climate crisis was also a major highlight of the year, with several extreme weather events from floods in China, Sudan, Malaysia, France, Spain, to typhoons in the Philippines, hurricanes and tornadoes and storms in the U.S., and destruction in Haiti and wildfires in Europe, Africa and the United States. 
leaders including Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari met in Glasgow in November for the COP26 summit, which was billed as a last chance to save the planet. In a bid to commit to transitional change through climate policy, the revised national policy on climate change was approved in June 2021. This will enable us to implement mitigation measures and also strengthen adaptation to a sustainable climate resilient development pathway in Nigeria. For a second year, COVID dominated the lives of many around the world with the fast developments of vaccines. More than 7.4 billion vaccine doses were administered in 184 countries in the first 11 months of 2021. But the year ended with the emergence of a new highly transmissible variant, Omicron, crushing hopes that the world would bid farewell to the pandemic in 2021. Now, very interesting. Uh, the main of the issues that were raised in 2021 are still being discussed, uh, carried over from the previous year into 2022. Kola. So, Amarachi, speaking of carryovers, what, what stood out for you of all these events in 2021? I think it would have to be the four coups that happened in West Africa or in Africa in general. And that's because I think about three of them took place. No, two of them took place in West Africa. And they hit pretty close to home. Mali, and then I think the coup in Guinea, you know, and Africa's efforts to try to get, you know, the military, which seemed to be making a comeback out of power, unsuccessfully, it seemed. You know, despite the sanctions on the Malian uh, junta, as well as the, uh, the ones in Guinea, despite, you know, the threats made and the appeals that were made, it just seemed like, you know, they were just heading for, you know, speaking to a, hitting a brick wall, I think. And then, of course, there was, you know, the, the, the crisis in Ethiopia, because, you know, not much information was coming out of there. And Nigeria got involved. Our former president, Lushiba Basanjo, was also there, you know, trying to negotiate between the president and the, uh, the, the Tigray rebels and all of that. And then, of course, the, the riots in, uh, in, in the U.S., in, the indeed, capital riots, of course. Indeed. I understand how wide stood out for you because it has many ramifications exactly. for Nigeria as yeah. a Western a power in the West African sub-region. Thank you, Amarachi. Our foreign affairs, head of our foreign affairs desk, Amarachi Ubani.